Welcome to Focus Washington. I'm Chuck and Coney, and I have my special guests today are Hal and Marilyn Wiener, who are great Washington-based filmmakers. And I look at the statistics. You've done 225 documentaries, four public TV series, and what is it, three major feature films. Well, well ma major is a uh, <laughs> is a uh, is a word that I don't know whether we can attach it to our feature films, but they were. Well, how is it that as they filmmakers? Produced. If you do produce, well, produce you know, we, it's kind of amusing when we went out to Hollywood after we did Image Maker and we were meeting with somebody who was actually um, uh, represented the Waynes brothers and we said this is so frustrating he said frustrating you made two feature films how many people can say that you know so uh, you know it, it's good point yeah div uh, you know div you get stuck in development hell out there yeah. and after a while it just beats the hell out of you. We were very, we've been very lucky, very, very lucky. But is it, is it easier to work from Washington? I mean, especially making features. We're always told that if you're not in New York or if you're not in Hollywood, it's too hard to put films together. When we, uh, when we were doing feature films in the late 80s, early 90s, yeah, it was much easier because, first of all, we had a track record, and so every time we, we spoke to whoever we wanted to out the studios that we were going to be in L.A., they would find time for us. Had we had a presence in LA, well, we can always see you. But we would give them a little time span, say, look, we're gonna be there for three three days. Do you want to meet and now we have a new project. But always had a meeting. Yeah, now if if we hear of somebody who is dying to do dramatic films though, our advice to them is always to go out west. Oh, yeah. Because that's where the talent is, that's where you you run into people who are doing the same things where you can have a meeting at the spur of the moment and where you're taken seriously because you are there. So I think it's changed somewhat from but that. But even as makers of, of documentaries, mm -hmm. which of course you are and you've mm -hmm. specialized in and been award-winning winners with mm -hmm. documentaries, where do you find your crews and your editors? Are there as good people here as you can find on the West Coast? Um, I'm not sure because we've always edited with uh, East Coast people. Directors, uh, for, for a crew, I would say yes, we have, the talent is just oh, strong yeah, here, yeah. for sure, in terms of cinematographers, editors, lighting specialists, and so on. But when it comes to um, doing just straight drama, no. Well, the other problem is that the, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, talent pool isn't that big here. And we, yes, we, we, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, it's, not, yeah. it's not that big. And what we do is we pay more than top dollar to ensure that we can get somebody that we want. Now, as you said earlier, when you travel, you prefer to take your own crew with you yeah. rather than pick up crews that's in other true. countries. Yeah. And it's, crew, it's a, a, a crew that you've worked with for years around here? Pretty much, you know, pretty much the same uh, DP assistants. There's about two or three. And, and, they, and that's what's interesting about the two or three cinematographers that we prefer to work with most. They've all had uh, feature film experience. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, the thing is that after all, it's a shorthand. You get you get on a location, and you you just have to say you know do something that we did you know a year and a half ago. You know, the same. and, and the you know the shorthand, and they start shooting, and they know exactly what we're talking about. Well, you've shot all over the world. You had problems with the language barriers. No. No, you hire people. You know, you wherever whatever country we go to, we always have a fixer. It's, you know, Which is it's kind of interesting because at the beginning we didn't even have a fixer. We was just a go and have a map and go to the location and figure that we would be able to communicate. And then we finally realized about the third or fourth show in that we better have somebody who knows the local folks and can facilitate mm -hmm. permits and talk to um, people and, and help us get our work Where have you had your best shooting experience? I, I, it, I yeah. hate to do a question like no, that. No, no, it's hard no. To do. It, uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, Vietnam. Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. It was so gorgeous. It, uh, so we were there during the high water uh, flood season, and then we were in the Delta, and it was visually one of the most exciting places we've ever been. It, it's just um, visually. It, it is stunning. Um, do Do you remember there was a Time Life photographer, cinema uh, photographer named Dick Swanson, who I remember. Uh, yeah, met, yeah, um, yeah. And he came back from Vietnam. He did a book, or it's called Passages to Vietnam or something. Something like that, yeah. And he said, when you go to Vietnam, you will be so amazed at the light. He said, it's like the light no other place on earth. 
um, and he was right. When we got there, it was just kind of the end of the rainy season. And all of a sudden, you would see these fields of emerald, um, these rice fields, and you would see women wearing these cone-shaped hats. And that whole juxtaposition of these women in the fields with these cone-shaped hats bending down in these emerald green fields, it, it, and the light was always changing. It was spectacular. He was right. I, I never saw so many hues of green yeah. any place else in the yeah. world. And the, the other place, obviously, was India. You know, wherever you turn the camera, it's fascinating. But, but Vietnam is really a very special place. You know, this is unique, a, a couple like you who have uh, spent your life together, working together, yeah. I'm sure sometimes yeah. it can be a little difficult. But would you have it any other way? No. Well, yeah, the, the flip answer is, of course, no. And the, uh, the re realistic answer is, you don't have that choice, do you? <laughs> no, of course you have that choice, choice. because it was oh, a choice. Oh, oh, no, it was oh, a choice that was made. And, yeah. and the thing is that, I mean, it, the only way I could see it working if one of us was not working in film is the other one would have to have a job that would be equally as satisfying. Because you can't go to India and Vietnam and say, hey, guess what? Yeah. <laughs> Look at what I saw. And come back to somebody who's working in an office in nine to five and not having the same mm -hmm. level of experience, even if it's not the same. But it has to pretty much match. Because I, I, I know I would not be a happy camper staying home and listening to these stories. Well, you know, I'm envious of it because my wife traveled the world a lot at one mm -hmm. point and I was home. You know? yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't easy, but I, I, I've often thought how wonderful it would be to work with her and just do it all together. So yeah, this I, is I, I, ideal yeah. as far as it, 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 it really is great. And we used to take the kids. Um, and they've, so, you know, I don't know whether it was good or bad because they've had some strange experiences around the world. Um, but, um, you know, we took them to El Salvador when they were during the uh, just before the war broke just out. before the war broke out, and we were in places we shouldn't have been, but the kids were there. We took them to India and visited snake charming villages, which they still remember. <laughs> of course, and but they're uh, in veteran travels themselves, yeah, so now, yeah, it worked. What a wonderful yeah. life! I'm so glad. Yeah. I thank you both, Hal <laughs> and Marilyn Weiner, for being here with me. Mm -hmm. I'm Chuck and Coney, and this has been Focus Washington.